organizing data in a frequency distribution. When we gather data for a certain study, we need to organize this data in a frequency distribution to analyze it easily. In this video, you will learn what is a frequency distribution, why construct a frequency distribution, and how to construct a frequency distribution. Now, let's talk this one by one. What is a frequency distribution? A frequency distribution is an arrangement of data that shows the frequency or occurrence of the different values in an experiment or study. Why construct a frequency distribution? Constructing frequency distribution is advised for easier and faster analysis and interpretation of the gathered data when the number of observations represented by n is 30 or more. How to construct a frequency distribution? For instance, below are the scores of 36 grade 7 students in mathematics tests. So we will construct a frequency distribution out of this given data. To construct a frequency distribution, we need to follow some steps. Step 1. Find the range. To find the range, we use the formula R equals HS minus LS. R stands for range. HS stands for highest score and LS stands for lowest score. Examine the scores. What is the highest score and what is the lowest score? The highest score is 51 and the lowest score is 10. Therefore, we need to subtract 51 by 10. The difference is 41. Step 2. Find the class interval. To find the class interval, we need to use the formula k equals square root of n. k stands for the class interval and n is the number of observation. The number of observation is stated in the problem, which is 36 grade 7 students. Therefore, 36 is the n value. If the number of observation is not stated in the problem, you need to count the number of scores in the problem, like this one. So... It's already stated in the problem that it's 36, but if not stated in a problem, we are going to count all of this. So here, substituting to the formula, we have square root of 36 and the square root of 36 is 6. Step 3. Determine the class size. To determine the class size, use the formula C equals R over K. C is the class size, R is the range, and K is the class interval. So from step 1, we already solved the range, and from step 2, we already solved the class interval. So therefore, we only have to substitute this value. So we have here 41, and we have here 6. Divide 41 by 6, and we get 6.8. We need to round this off to the nearest whole number. Now, remember the rule for rounding off numbers. Round up if the next number is 5 or greater and round down if the next number is 4 or lesser. In this case, we have to round up so we get 7. Step 4. Make the frequency distribution. To make a frequency distribution, make a table showing the class interval of the scores, the tally, and the frequencies. Start with the first class interval. The first class interval must contain the lowest score. Remember that our class size is 7 from our step 3. Our lowest score is 10. We will count 7 units from 10. So we have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we end up to 16. Therefore, our first class interval is 10 to 16. Now, class intervals contains lower limit and upper limit. Here, 10 is the lower limit and 16 is the upper limit. Another way of getting the class interval is to use the formula upper limit equals lower limit plus class size minus 1. So we have here 10 plus 7 minus 1, so 10 from the lower limit plus 7, the class size, minus 1. So that's already a constant. So we get 16 here, and that is already our 
upper limit. The next class interval is 17 to 23. The lower limit here is the number next to your upper limit in the first class interval. So you start with 70 up to 23. Again, you can opt to just count based on the class size or use the formula upper limit equals lower limit plus C minus 1. Next class interval is 24 to 30, 31 to 36, up to the last. So be sure that the last class interval here contains the highest score. So the highest score is 51. So we have 51 to 56. In the last row, you write the value of the class size, which is 7. Now let's make the tally. Tally is the record of occurrence of scores shown by a tally mark, and every fifth of the tally is drawn diagonally to make a gate of 5. Now, examine each of the scores. In which class interval does 25 belongs? It belongs to the class interval 24 to 30. How about a 30? It belongs again to 24 to 30. Next, 17. It belongs to 17 to 23. 34. It belongs to 31 to 36. 18. It belongs to 17 to 23. 46. It belongs to 44 to 50. Now, this is the way and how to make the tally. These are the tallies of all the scores. Now, let's go to frequency. We can get the frequency from the number of tally that we have just a while ago. There are 7 scores that belongs to the first class interval 10 to 16. There are 5 scores that belongs to 17 to 23. 5 scores also belongs to 24 to 30. 9 scores belongs to 31 to 36. 2 scores belongs to 37 to 40. 7 scores belongs to 44 to 50. And 1 score belongs to 51 to 56. Now in the last row of the frequency, so we have n equals 36. To get the n here, so you are going to get the total of all the frequency. Now if the total is not equal to the number of observations, then possibly you have some mistakes in doing your tally or you have some mistakes in adding your frequency. So you may have to go back and look for some mistakes and fix it. This time, let's do some activity. Make a frequency distribution of the age of the senior citizens in Bululawan Lake with Sambanga del Sur. So here are the data. Make a frequency distribution. Remember the steps in making the frequency distribution. Step 1. Solve for the range. Range equals highest score minus lowest score. So let's examine in the highest score and the lowest score of this data. The highest score is 85 and the lowest score is 70. So let's subtract this and then we have 15 as the value of the range. Step 2. Find the class interval. K equals square root of n. So our n value here is 38. Square root of 38 is 6.1. In this case, this is a decimal number. Therefore, we need to round it off to the nearest whole number. In this case, we have to round it down because the next number of 6 is 1. So that is equal to 6. Step 3. Determine the class size using the formula C equals R over K. So let us substitute the value we get from step 1, which is 15, and then the value we get from step 2, which is 6. So we have here 15 over 6, or 15 divided by 6, is equal to 2.5. We need to round it off to the nearest whole number. And in this case, round up because the next number to 2 is a 5. So we have 3. So make the frequency distribution now. Our first class interval here is 70 to 72. If we can still remember, class size is 3. So therefore, we only have 70, 71, 70, 
two. So second class interval is 73 to 75. Third class interval is 76 to 78, 79 to 80, 82 to 84, 85 to 87. So we reflected in the last row under the class interval column, C is equal to 3. So next is our tally. The same with what we have done just a while ago. We put a tally mark in each of the class interval where these scores belongs. Next is the frequency. We only have to reflect the number of tallies in the frequency. So we have 8, 8, 15, 4, 2, and 1. So we have here the N, which is the total of the frequency, equals 38. So that is equivalent to the number of observations in the problem. So there is no problem with our tally. For you to practice more, I will give you some homework. Make a frequency distribution of the temperature of the first 30 customers in the mall. These are the following values and good luck. If you find this video helpful, then please give me a thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to keep updated for my new uploads. Thanks for watching!